Hello and welcome back to Crafty Magic Arts. Today we're going to be doing a thrift store makeover from start to finish. Before kicking us off, we're going to go back in time to when I reviewed the piece for you to see, and then we can get going on the makeover. So, enjoy! So today we're planning on doing a repaint. After my last project that was very large, something simple is what I need. Here is what I'm planning on repainting. I got this from the thrift store. I don't remember how much for anymore. I think I took the price take off. But as you can see, the mold is actually really good. So it's a ceramic piece, as you can see, so it's poured. It's made in Japan. It's quite lovely, actually. The only thing I don't like about it is the spots. Everything else is quite lovely. It's just a shame these spots like why polka dots I know that there's various different types of giraffes uh, which I will show on screen but I'm personally drawn to the more rectangular spots with like intricate almost like puzzle pieces but they're like touching each other it's absolutely stunning and honestly giraffes are one of my all-time favorite animals one of my top and so I feel like I need to bring this guy to life, but I want to go about it something different. I want to do the spots, but I'm going to go completely off the rails as far as coloring goes, because I figure, why not do something different? Let's bring this guy to life in a whole different way. And let's do that. Now I'm prepping my piece by first sanding it. I give it a really good sand down to make sure it's all ready to go. And after really working at this, I need to clean up the dust and I use baby wipes for that. Ever since becoming a parent, baby wipes are one of the main things I use for cleaning and this is no exception. So cute. I'm moving on to gesso. Gesso is a perfect primer for any piece you're working on. It gives a good base of color that allows everything to be put on really evenly. So it's highly recommended that this is added first just to allow for a good base. Using craft paint, I'm now creating a rainbow of colors, as you can see here. Of course, my simple art piece wasn't just a simple art piece. I had to go extra and create a rainbow, because, you know, why not? I'm adding white to make these all pastel, as they are delightful, and mixing them together. Once the colors are closer to my liking, I will then use them to paint my piece. Here they are, they are looking mighty pretty and ready for the first color. I am starting at the top with the red. I was debating on which direction I wanted the rainbow to go, but I decided that red would be best at the top and then moving down through the rainbow in the correct order until the bottom. So I'm cutting off the giraffe's head and that's just because he's so tall. So I zoomed out a little bit there. And here you can see I'm slowly adding all the colors. Adding yellow tends to be the hardest part. It does tend to get really lost between the green and orange, so I'm trying to keep it there. I had to go back a few times to make sure the yellow actually popped. Also with the purple, the purple is going to be somewhat hidden um, at the bottom there because the legs are actually mostly white, so I do try to raise up the purple a little bit more so it's not completely lost. And here is the first real pass of the gradient of color. This is the first pass. I probably do about three or four in total, but I only show one. Once I'm happy with the coverage of the color, I move on to using my pastels to give some shadows. I want the shadows to be done at this stage because I do need to create the spots, but I don't want to have to worry about this after. So you can see I've actually had created some dark shadows on purpose. I'm cleaning it up with my eraser, but they're there on purpose because I know that I'm going to be adding a lot of the white color um, that will be hiding this. Now to mask the pastels, I use my clear coat and move on to prepping, creating the spots. Having reference nearby was really useful. I did go a lot more rectangular, probably more brick-like than intended, but using my watercolor pencils, I, I was able to kind of plan out my plan, I guess. And it just gives me a really good idea of what I'm hoping to accomplish with this piece. And I did use reference to get the look all the way down. Watercolor pencils can be easily erased, so I could go and fix them. I did change the color halfway through. Orange seemed to be a little bit more noticeable, and then I did the whole thing as much as I could. Now I'm using uh, white. It's actually not pure white. It's actually quite pink. 
it's uh, a little bit of pink added to it, but I'm actually using my golden flat matte acrylics um, because this will prevent me from having to do multiple layers. It's already quite complex what I'm doing here. I didn't need to add a layer of complexity by adding multiple layers into this piece. It would take me three times as long. So just getting really good quality paints in this for this one was absolutely imperative. Um, now this is a long and tedious process. It took me quite a while to actually get this to where it needed to be. I did it in multiple passes. I didn't want to bump it because I knew that if I messed up my colors, the spots themselves, it'd be really hard to fix them almost impossible. So I had to really just be slow and methodical with every single piece here and make sure it looked the way I wanted it to. And also taking breaks because this is so such tedious work, it can be hard on your body to be like leaning over, um, over a piece for that long, hard on your neck. So you have to really just take your time with something like this and make sure that you're taking breaks as necessary to get the job done. I did some magical snapping in between because like I said, this took a long time, but we just continued on. I only managed to get one side done. I did have this foam laying around my house that I've had forever and honestly it was great. I used it uh, to prop up the piece while I was working so I wouldn't actually damage the ear at all. And it worked. I used it a lot during this project. Actually, I found myself using it in other projects as well. So I'm going to keep that handy. Just saying. Now I'm finally moving on to the other side and as you can see I'm still using the foam to prop up the giraffe and continuing on. It was quite difficult. I want to make sure the pattern was similar on both sides. So I kept having to like look back and forth between the sides to make sure that I was actually doing it somewhat correctly even though I pre-planned. I did mess up a little in between and I kind of had to like backtrack or figure out what I needed to do. And like I said before, it's really hard to fix the color afterwards. So I was able to catch it early because I was paying such close attention to the very minute details. While this is not perfect, I did take my time. A lot of magical stuff happened behind the scenes and now we're moving on to other parts. It just, this never, it felt like it never ended. It took me like three days. To be fair, three not whole days. I, I do have a full-time job. Um, I do this in my off time, usually in the evenings, I got two hours. So this is when I'm working on it. So it works really good. And here we go. The legs are all done. Now you can see the purple is still coming through very little, just a tiny bit in the spots, the hooves and the tail. That is, it's not a lot, but it's there. So the purple, the, the rainbow hasn't lost its purple luckily. But now I've got so much done and now I need to work on the face. Yes, the face. Like the rest of this piece, I was very closely referencing my references. Um, I want to make sure that, again, I didn't mess this up. So I really took time in planning this. So I used the smallest brush I had to kind of plan out the tiniest, the tiny little face spots, because they're tiny and going around the eye and all the tiny areas to make sure that it did come out the way I'd hoped. I built like a mask because there's a large portion of the giraffe that is white, but it really blends in. And here you go. You can see that I did keep the bottom lip red and the top of the nose. And here's the rest of the body. I think at this point I am done with the white finally and I'm able to move on to next steps finally. Yay! And I don't do a lot of this, but I do do a little bit of dry brushing just around the nose area just to remove that hard line. I did this nowhere else. It was a very minor bit of dry brushing, but it was really important to have that kind of blurred line on the face. It looked, it actually worked out really well. I absolutely love that I had that little wheel, that wheel of color you see there. That is actually something I picked up for beads, but it actually kept really well. Um, I it didn't have the greatest seal. The paint now is starting to dry, but if you keep it in a Ziploc bag as well, which I did for the most part, you can actually see it off the side there. The paints actually stayed. 
So I was able to have these paints consistently with me the whole time. I did have a few issues where I did need to uh, fix up the color and I was able to mix the colors pretty quickly, but I did, luckily I only did it maybe once or twice. And now it's time to work onto the mane. Now, this had a painted mane or sculpted mane. I didn't like it, so I'm pulling out my yarn. This yarn's from the dollar store. I created a beautiful gradient, and then I'm like, wait, that yellow is way too bright. Let's bring in a different one. And this is from a different set. It's a little bit more fluffy, but it's the right color. So I'd rather sacrifice the, the, the shine the, for the yellow, just so it's the right color. Now to prep the yarn, you need to just cut the length you want and you want to put it on a rod of some sort. This is actually a rod that I got from, I think it's one of like the tomato stands, like those cheap ones you can buy. I just kept the wire because why not? And it's perfect for this. I always have it handy and then I put my thread or my yarn onto it and I just make sure I cut them all the same size. So I'm actually referencing that length for each color and it's good to go. I didn't actually make enough. I had to make more um, or cut more strands in between, but I do this. What I'm doing here is I actually am laying out the entire rainbow together. And a few times I actually mix the colors, like do one or two strands together, especially when it comes to the yellows and the greens. The blue and purples are actually going to be at the tail level. So they're not actually blended in with the, um, the green at all. And like I do all the time, I just comb this out with a pep brush. So this is an old pep brush I've had since like 2010. And I am combing out the hair and it's getting it ready to be flat ironed. It's looking really pretty. Oh, the rainbow's so nice. It's not perfect, especially because there is different textures there, but I got it working really closely to what I wanted. Before I move on to the hair, I do feel like I need to shade the piece a bit more. So I'm actually shading now on the white. Um, as you can see here, I'm not using, uh, I'm using more gray to start just to kind of give it a general tone, but I find that didn't really look good. So I actually just use the colors in the areas in which I was shading. So here I'm working on purple because it's near the bottom. I create like a darker red, a darker orange, a darker yellow, darker green, and I work that into the shadows on top of the of the of the spots so i'm able to pull the shadows back out of the the hidey place oh here i'm using my baby wipes again i'm cleaning up areas that i don't want the pastels to be so uh that's a really good way additionally i need to do a wash after that's all sealed and ready to go um this is just to make sure that beautiful texture is actually captured i found with the previous just paint and pastels it was quite flat so this will pull it back um, but I did go a little heavy handed, uh, again, with baby wipes. I did actually use them to remove some of the color. Actually, after it dried, I was able to lift some of it. So it did bring kind of the luster back um, and not going too dark. Now that we've repositioned the giraffe, I'm going to move on to adding the mane. The mane itself is actually made from the yarn that we prepped earlier, and I'm gonna slowly go down the, the whole length to add the color as needed. I wanna kinda line it up with the way the color is on the neck, so it should look really nice. This is like kinda tedious. I'm kinda pulling from different areas. I didn't use all of the, the yarn here, but I used the ones that I needed. I had to go back a few times and fill in some gaps just because placing it like this, this is, these aren't wefts, these are just chunks of hair that you're kind of putting on and hoping they look good once they're dry. It sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. I feel I was able to like really pull it together here and make it look pretty good. Just want to make sure it also stood up right, <laughs> but it looks so ridiculous to start. So I'm pulling off all the extra hair here and getting ready to now trim it. I want to make sure it looks good and so I'm referencing again that they have a really nice taper so you taper at the top and taper at the bottom and make sure the giraffe's mane and tail actually looks as it should so or mane specifically mane at this point now it's tail so I 
I know the tail was really sculpted, like better than the mane, but it it needed the same TLC as the as the mane. So here I am adding a little bit of the yarn. I do go for more of the purple on top. So the blue is there, but it's kind of hidden, but just to bring more of, of that purple out. Prepping the eyes, I'm adding some color in there with just some of the colors I have. I had it originally a blue, didn't look good. I now did purple, again, to tie it all together. And now I'm using my Settlers Fine Liners. Now these are water-based, so in between I did have to spray the giraffe to make sure they didn't leak everywhere. I, I did have one mess up, but that's okay. It ended up working out quite well. You can see here, this is a really good way for me to get the lines looking the way I want them to without having to fiddle with a paintbrush. Moving on to watercolor pencils, I'm just adding some, some colors in between to make it look the way I want it to. I really want the eyes to like be dark, but not so dark. The whole thing I'm seeing here is that the, this whole piece is like absent of black. There is no black in this entire piece. Going back in with my fine liners, I'm adding some pinks uh, into the eyes and making sure that the color is really popping. I also want the pupil is going to be like a dark blue and purple. So it really like you can see it, but it's subtle. I love giraffes pupils. They're actually rectangular, just like horses and goats, but they're really hidden because a giraffe's eye is so dark. So if you look really closely, you can see the rectangular eye, but it's not obvious. And then using some of my nice golden matte, flat matte, I am adding some white. And like most of my pieces, I like to have the bottom with felt. Um, I am using one of those fine liners to create an outline and then I will be cutting it out and forming it into the giraffe. It's looking pretty good. All right, using my hot glue, I'm going to glue it onto the piece. But the thing is, I actually really love the fact that it's from Japan and it's got a signature or it's got a stamp in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my signature in here, but I'm going to make sure that this stuff is visible. So the felt is not going to touch the center. It's just going to go around the edges because I do want to honor the original creator. The, the sticker that is from Japan is going to remain and then my initials are going to be added onto the piece. So it's like a bit of a collaboration. I hope I did. If anyone anyone worked on this once upon a time from Japan does happen to stumble upon this video and is like, what's going on? I hope you feel honored by the work that I did. Replacing my blade there, I am now cutting out the center and getting to where I kind of want it to be. I want the whole center area to be removed. So using the knife and also some scissors to do that, I am going to reveal the piece. You need to clean up the edges as well. Adding some more glue just to clean up the edges of the areas in which I pulled up. And yeah, it's looking it's looking really good. It's it's now stuck. It's ready to go and it's nearly finished. Jumping back into the fray, I do want to add some gloss. The original piece actually had beautiful glossy eyes. So I'm actually going to add some UV resin here into the eyes to make sure that they continue to be glossy. I absolutely just love it. The glossy eyes. The UV light will cure it right on top of the piece and the eyes are now looking really shiny. And that's it. This is the final thrift store makeover. Going from a pretty plain giraffe with polka dot spots to a wildly rainbow giraffe with more rectangular spots. It was a lot of fun to make, more challenging than I originally planned, but I'm really glad I did it. I really hope you liked this video. Uh, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and help me continue to grow this channel. I'd love to see you again. So have a, yourself a wonderful day and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.